Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning inspiration. It's another Monday morning, February 19, 2024. I hope that we are doing okay today. I hope that we had a good night's rest and we are ready to take on the day. Our reading today comes to us from Leviticus chapter 11, and we will read from verses 1 to 30. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parted the oof, and is cloven-footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat, of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the oof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the oof, he is unclean unto you. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the oof, he is unclean unto you. And the ear, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the oof, he is unclean unto you. And the swine, Though he divided the oof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean unto you. Of their flesh shall he not eat, and their carcass shall he not touch, they are unclean to you. These shall he eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever had fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall he eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be even an abomination unto you, ye shall not eat of their flesh, but he shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be abomination unto you. And these are they which he shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten, they are an abomination. The eagle and the ossifrage and the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gear eagle and the stalk, and the heron, after his kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. All fowls that creep, going upon all four, shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may be eat of every flying creeping things that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet, to leap withal upon the earth. Yet these may ye eat, of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet to leap withal upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the ball locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying creeping things which are four feet shall be an abomination unto you. And for these ye shall be unclean. Whosoever toucheth the carcass of them shall be unclean until even. And whosoever beareth aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. The carcasses of every beast which divided the oof 
and is not cloven footed nor cheweth the cud are unclean unto you. Every one that toucheth them shall be unclean. And whatsoever goeth upon his paw among all manner of beasts that goeth on all four, those are unclean unto you. Whosoever toucheth their carcass shall be unclean until the even. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until even. They are unclean unto you. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth. The weasel and the mouse and the tortoise after his kind. And the ferret and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole. And I say, Amen. We give God thanks this morning for another portion of his word. And this morning reading is a very interesting one. And it might be a, a bit touching or touchy for a lot of folks. Because I know that there are a lot of us we love our food. And so I might be touching, you know, a very sensitive spot this morning as it relates to to food and what we should eat or can eat now leviticus 11 is a book that was written during the time of the the patriarchs or when israel was traveling through the wilderness right these laws were written by moses from the instruction of God about the things that we can eat meaning the animals that we can eat or shouldn't eat now these are some very interesting lists that we see here we must understand what it is that the Lord is saying to us here Specific instruction is given to us about the things that we can eat or the animals that we can eat are allowed to eat and the ones that we're not supposed to eat. And the Bible separate them by calling them clean and unclean. Now, not just based on dietary reason, but also because God said that they are not to be eaten because they are unclean. So among some of those animals that can be eaten, the Bible says that they must chew the cud, they must have a divide oof, and they must be cloven-footed. So for example, you have like the cow, you have the goat, you have the sheep. Those fit the criteria of clean animal that can be eaten. Now, for the swine or for the pig, I know you're going to say, but the swine, it have a divided hoof and a cloven foot. But here is the, the twist to it now. Though it may have those specifications, it does not chew the cud. Therefore, the swine is unclean. So, swine is not unclean because Jesus cast the evil spirit into the swine. I know many people are of the impression and the belief that is why the Bible say that the pig is unclean. But that's not why the pig is unclean. The swine was unclean before Jesus cast the demons into the swine. And it goes on. So it says that for the, the animal in the sea that can be eaten, they must have fin and also they must have scales. What are the two specifications? Fin and scales. So anything in the river... And the sea or any other water that have 
fin and scales, they are good to eat. Anything else must not be eaten because it is unclean. So eel cannot be eaten. Shark, dolphin, etc. Okay, we have some strange cuisine in this world. But here the Bible is telling us that these things should not be eaten. It no matter how good they want to cook them or prepare them, it doesn't make it okay. Then it goes on to the ear. It talk about the fact that eagle cannot be eaten or anything in that family. So the eagle, the ark, the night owl, the swan, the pelican, the stalk, all of these, the bat, they are unclean and should not be eaten. Okay then, so what among the bird can be eaten? So among the clean birds, you have chicken, you have dove, you have duck, and pigeon, quail, turkey, stuff like those. Those strain of bird, they are considered clean. There are a few more, but just remember, they must have the specification that is listed in the verse for it to be considered clean. Okay? Now, among these things that the Bible says can be eaten, you have the grasshopper and beetle and the locust. Personally, I am not interested in eating any of those things. But the Bible said it can be eaten. So if you want to get your bugs on, get your bugs on. <laughs> but on a serious note, you know, the Bible said they can be eaten. So if you want to give it a try, that's up to you. I won't be eating any of those things, that's for sure. But the Bible says here that those are clean. And I know in some countries they are cuisine and delicacies. So I know that there are people who eat it. A matter of fact, John, John the Baptist, he ate locusts and honey. But I ain't promising anybody that I'm going to try that. <laughs> but these are the things that the Bible say that we can eat. I am not able to cover it all, but you can go through it and get further clarification and understanding on it. Keep in mind also that a lot of these animals were used as sacrifices offered to idols. So the Eden would use them in their worship. What spiritual takeaway can we apply to this chapter? The spiritual takeaway is this. The unclean animal here can be represented as sin. And just as the unclean animal is unclean, and if you touch it, you are unclean. If you eat it, you are unclean. And therefore, it best if you stay away from it so that you are not contaminated by it. In the same way, sin is unclean. Sin, we must stay away from it. We must stay away from temptation. We must stay away from being even in the same room with it. So that we don't become corrupted by its influence. And so... We must make sure that we remain pure by the grace of God. And the only way that we can remain pure is if we abide in the principle of his word. So that he can protect us and so that he can give us guidance as we go along each day. And so let us understand the seriousness of it. You know, We might just look at it in the obvious sense about you know what animal to eat or not to eat but we must not miss the spiritual lesson here remember also in the garden of eden that the same instruction was given to adam and eve do you remember the tree that was in the midst of the garden the tree of knowledge of good and evil the lord told the both of them not to eat it 
not to touch it, not to even go near it. Because in the day that they eat it, what is going to happen to them? They will die. And they refused to listen. They went, they took it, and they eat it. And here we are living in the consequences of their action. So it is not a game, folks. When God say something, we need to listen. Because I know we can't live with the consequences after. I know we can't. We may think that we are up to living with it, but we can't. And so it's best we just be obedient and done. Simple. That's what it's come down to. Obedience or disobedience. Sometimes folks make a big fuss about the fact that why they can't eat this or why they can't eat that. And all oh, the Bible say whatever he bless no man can call and clean and all of those things i've come across folks who quote scriptures to me to justify that god said that these things can be eaten but the interesting thing about these quote that they give they only pick a section out of the passage and they never take the time to read everything to understand the context of what is actually being said and so they get in misinterpretation and a misunderstanding. And that is why the Bible says that when we study, we must study line up and line, precept upon precept, so that we don't misunderstand what he's trying to say to us. You know, we, we fuss about these things, but there's no one who is going to lick down a condor or a drunker, as we call it, and serve it up as a Sunday dinner to give to your family. Because we all know what that bird does. It's a scavenger. Eat dead animal. Eat even people. If it get the chance. But there are other scavengers that people eat. Like crab. Shrimp. And all of those things. Shellfish. Those should not be eaten. Because what? They have no scale. And they do not have fin. See what I'm getting at now? So we have to learn. To follow what the Bible says. Because when we follow what the Bible says. We save ourselves misery and heartache so many times. As a matter of fact. In the time that we are living right now. It would be wise and better for us to avoid meat. Because meat is not meat anymore. I see some things that they are doing to pass off as meat it is amazing oh we don't die yet in some places they they are making meat how do you make meat huh how do you make meat so if you want to live longer and healthier it would be better to adopt a vegetarian diet you are much more safer than if you depend on the meat it, at least if you grow the meat yourself it's not so bad. But if you're not growing it yourself, you are putting yourself and your family at greater risk. Trust me on that. It's not a joke. Man's heart is desperately wicked to know that they are willing to do this in the name of making a profit. But that's the world we live in. So you decide the choices and you live with the choices so make good choices okay so i am not here to condemn you and i'm not here to make you feel bad about yourselves for those who do eat some of these things all i am saying to you is this let the holy spirit be your guide don't be hard and close your mind to the voice of the holy spirit when the holy spirit is instructing you to stop doing something and if you want to know what is right and what is wrong go to the word of god and go with an open mind so that the holy spirit can guide and teach you because we can't go to heaven as disobedient children we have to obey the command and the status of the lord 
And so may God continue to bless you. I know some of these things, they are weaknesses that we have. And I pray that the Lord will give you all and all of us the strength to overcome our weaknesses so that we can become victorious and so that we can be an example to those around us as we continue to live for Him. Amen.